let's talk about the principal agent again. So we have the principal agent. Now, the crucial thing that we want to think about here is that principles and agent um, and principal agent interactions are common in many economic circumstances. So the principal agent game is a game that tries to capture some aspects of the interaction between principles and agents. Now, one of those um, aspects is the fact that um, there is typically a conflict of interest between a principal and an agent. The principal wants the agent to um, engage in some kind of effortful activity, um, but that effortful activity is costly to the agent. Now, um, the principal agent game is designed in a way to have that conflict of interest between the two players, the principal and the agent, um, and at the same time, it's very simplified. So it's not going to have all the dynamics that we might expect in a principal agent interaction, for example, in the workplace or in loan agreements similar, but the basic intuition of having two individuals or two people between whom there is a conflict of interest and thinking about that conflict of interest. Um, we can see that um, in certain circumstances some people are going to behave self-interestedly and others some people are going to behave trustingly and trustworthily. Okay, so let's think about this a little bit. We're going to have two players. We're going to have the principal So we've got the principal, and then we're going to have the agent. Now, um, what happens in this experiment is that um, the principal wants the agent to engage in some activity. Now, what is going to happen here is that the experimenter endows the agent with some number of points. In the papers that we're going to refer to, um, there are several that um, use this experimental design, but the basic one is as follows, where um, in Falk and Kosfeld in 2006, in American Economic Review, you have the experimenters endowing the agent with 120 points or experimental currency units. Now, what then happens is the agent starts off with that number of points. 120. Then they can transfer to the principal a number of points x. So the agent can transfer to the principal some number of points x. Okay, so x goes from the agent to the principal. But crucially, the principal receives 2x of those points. Now, this intuition is meant to capture the idea of what happens in a working relationship. For example, um, if you're engaged in production where you have an um, owner and a worker, the worker engages in some productive activity, but the, per the product of what they produce is in fact more valuable than just the work that they do by themselves. So the transfer is capturing the idea of effort exerted by the agent, which is costly to them because it reduces their payoff. And then the principal gets more than just the effort exerted by the agent. So the principal gets 2x. Now, um, an aspect of principal-agent relationships in the real world, though, is that principals aren't just asking for effort to be exerted by agents. What they can, in fact, do is exert control over agents. So this is where the game gets interesting. Um, the principal, knowing that they can get x from the agent, um, can also um, establish a minimum amount of x that they will require from the agent. So the principal can establish a minimum amount x under bar. So for example, um, if I am the principal and I establish a minimum amount of x under bar as 5, I will then get um, a payoff of 2 times 5 equal to 10 in the experiment. If on the other hand my uh, minimum amount were 10, um, x bar equal to 10, then I would get 2 times 10 equal to 20 experimental currency units in this, this experiment. Now, um, in the experiment, what um, Falk and Kosfeld do is they test out three different levels of x bar. What they want to understand 
is three levels of x bar in three different treatments, where x bar is equal to one of five, 10, or 20. Okay, so that's x under bar equal to five, 10, or 20. And what they want to contrast that with is a context in which the principle does not exert control. So here, what happens is the agent experiences or has to think about two potential alternative conditions. The first one is a condition in which they experience the control, either 5, 10, or 20, depending on um, the level of control that they have established in the experiment, or the agent experiences no control. The principle does not exert control over them. So in that second condition, there is no minimum stipulated by the principle. The principle says, I am not going to stipulate a minimum by you. I am going to trust you to elicit some effort, to um, engage in some effortful activity. And I am just going to see what you will do in that circumstance. And what we then want to understand is in comparing those two conditions, we will see a difference of behavior between the two, um, between the agent. The agent might exert more, be, uh, more effort in a condition when they are trusted to just do what they will without a minimum, versus when they are not trusted with a minimum and they then exert um, less effort or they transfer less to the principal. So let's see what that will look like. Let's see what that will look like. We said a moment ago that the principal and the agent are interacting and the principal can either exert control or not exert control. So how might that look? So let's just quickly diagram this as a game tree. So we have the principle, and the principle can choose to exert a minimum x bar. Okay. Um, so they're exerting control. So it's control, and x bar is what they um, then um, stipulate as a minimum for the agent. Um, or they can leave the agent free to choose. So no x under bar. So control, and they stipulate an, an x under bar, or free, no x under bar. Then the agent, in each circumstance, okay, so the agent now has to decide how much they are going to transfer to the principal. Now, I can't draw a branch for every single um, cho choice the agent will make when the principal has exerted control. But what you want to think of here is what now happens is the agent now decides on a transfer. And when they decide on that transfer, what happens then is that they are going to be left with um, an amount, 120 um, minus um, x under bar plus whatever they send to the principal. Okay. That's in the case where they've been controlled. Um, that's what the um, agent is left with. What does the principal receive? The principal receives x under bar plus the additional amount that gets sent all times 2. That's what the principal gets, that's what the agent receives. If on the other hand, um, I'm just going to erase this. If, on the other hand, um, the principal leaves the agent free, what we want to think about here is that there is no x bar stipulated. What happens is the principal simply gets 2 times x, whatever is sent, and the agent is left with 120 minus x. Okay, so what we want to think about here is 2 times x, 120 minus x, that's what we have over here um, as what is sent by the the agent and what is um, sent by the agent when they're free versus what is sent by the agent when they're controlled. Now what we're interested in understanding is whether 
this amount here, when the agent is control, controlled, is different to this amount here when the agent is left free. When we compare those two, we can see the response of the agent to being controlled. Now why this is interesting is because if the agent um, exerts more effort in this circumstance, that is they transfer a larger amount to the principal when they are left free than when they are controlled, that would exhibit, um, that would suggest that agents have control aversion. That is, they dislike being controlled by the principal. Now, um, this idea um, stems from two potential things that are interesting for us. Either the intrinsic act of being controlled is itself a bad experience that the agent dislikes and therefore they transfer less, or they're going to behave reciprocally towards the principal who trust them by not um, exerting control over them. And as a consequence of that trust, the agent then transfers more to the principal. That's what we could think of where 120 minus x is greater than 120 minus x bar plus s. So if this amount, um, if the x transfer here is greater than the x bar plus s over here, that suggests that the um, agent is behaving in a control averse manner as a consequence either of um, intrinsic control aversion, disliking the experience of being controlled psychologically, or reciprocity and trust, preferring the idea of being trusted by the principal and therefore reciprocating that trust toward the principal.